Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you my palette swapping uh, shader for Game Maker Studio 2 and I'm also going to explain a bit how it works. Uh, so basically this is what it does, it takes in a grayscale image and turns it into this and you can change, as you can see I'm pressing the P key to change the palette used and you can even go crazy with stuff like this. Uh, this is a shader I use in a lot of my games, including um, Power Slaves recently, that I haven't made a video on yet, uh, the HI216 emulator, um, Crystal Ninja, and Skyfall, and I don't know if uh, maybe even, even more than that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll start by showing you how. Uh, how to possibly implement it. If you want, you can download it from the Game Maker Marketplace for free. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, so here, I mean, in this room, uh, we've we've just got this image that we got from the internet. I made it grayscale, and we've got um, the palette swapper object, uh, which is over here, uh, and I've made it persistent. Uh, so that you just put it into into like the initializing room. I always have a, a room that is the first one that is opened when the game is turned on and it just immediately skips to the next one. And then I put all of my persistent objects. Uh, so here in the create code we have a surf palette, which is a surface. I'm going to explain what that is in a second. Uh, the palette index, which I change uh, here. and uh, And then these are uniform uh, shader handles, which I'll also explain in a second. <coughs> uh, so, what we, what I actually do here is basically I start by taking a, uh, like a screenshot of the screen, basically, copying it to a separate surface, which, it, which you can think of just like a canvas, a separate like drawing uh, place, place to draw, uh, because usually when you draw things in Game Maker, you just draw them to the screen. That's, that's how you think of it. But actually you're drawing it to what's called the application surface. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically just creating a new surface that has the same dimensions as the application surface. So I get the width and I get the height. And then uh, I just copy over the application surface to this new surface. Uh, I'm not sure if it's possible to just draw the surface onto itself with the shader. Uh, but this is the method I, that I use just to be safe, I guess. Um, then, here I actually turn on the shader and I set the uniforms for the shader. And you can think of these just like variables in the shader that uh, you give to the shader. And depending on that, it gives different results. And finally, I draw the surface once again, this time with the palette shader on. And uh, importantly, because I'm using surfaces, I also have in the clean up event, I free the surface if it exists. Now I will now go into the actual shader code. This is written in GLSL, which is quite different to normal game maker programming language. So it's a, it's a bit different syntax and it's going to get a bit annoying to work with, especially because there's no uh, like immediate error saying, and when you get the errors in the in the box here at the bottom, you don't really know what they mean. Uh, you have to kind of know what the what the likely errors to get are. So this uh, this is basically the coordinates of the pixel that's being worked on right now. Um, the way that shaders work is they just go through the whole image pixel by pixel and do code for each pixel individually. Uh, then here are uniforms, which are the variables that are kind of imported from the text outside of the shader, and imported from the code outside of the shader. So here we imported it in this event. Um, so we've got a sampler 2D, which is basically like a separate texture, uh, the palette sprite, and you can see here what I'm doing is uh, this is for some reason 
this function is called texture set stage instead of shader set uniform sampler or something like that. Texture set stage. Um, for each of these you need the appropriate handle, which you just use shader get uniform or in this case shader get sampler index. And here you put in the name of it in this code in quotation marks. And then you later use it in the function over here. And then the the actual texture that I'm setting it to is text, which here I find using the function sprite get texture. Uh, and the sprite is this one over here as palettes. And you can see it's really simple. It's just um, however many pixels, however many different colors you want in the color palette, and then however many different palettes you want vertically. Uh, but notice importantly that you have uh, it from going from dark to white in all of these. Um, which I'll get to in a second. So here we have the palette sprite, or palette sampler. Uh, then we have a uh, uniform float that is the palette index, the number of colors, and finally this is the texture size. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how this works exactly. All I need, all I know that is, is that you need to later multiply it by the size for some reason. That's just like shader black magic, like ignore that. Uh, this is the actual code uh, executed for each of these. So first, this line. Um, I condensed it quite a bit. I could even condense it down to one line, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, so first this, texture 2D, GM base texture, VV text chord. This basically returns the color of the pixel that's currently being worked at. So in the top left, that's going to be the color of this pixel, which is black. So it's gonna be R0, G0, B0 alpha 1. This is the color. I take the red value from that color and in shaders this is always going to be between 0 and 1. I multiply it by the number of colors <coughs> and then I take the ceiling of this value. I subtract 1 and I make it, uh, make it equal to at least 0. So now I'll explain why I'm doing all of this. The way that my shader works is that for each pixel, and depending on the grayscale value between 0 and 1 or between 0 and 255, uh, I make it snap, basically, to one of these five colors. So if it's uh, 0, uh, then in this, in, in a grayscale image, R, J, and P, R is going to be the same. So for R equals zero, um, I'm just going to snap it to the leftmost pixel here. And for R equals 255, I'm going to snap to the rightmost one. Uh, now I could just do that by uh, multiplying by the color number and then rounding that. Uh, the reason why I do this a bit longer procedure is so that um, when G, when 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 the brightness is is like just barely below pure white, and I still want to, to snap to this value, uh, which is why I multiply this by uh, the number of colors. So um, which I previously import over here. So I've got five colors. So the result will be between zero and five. Now you'll notice that there's. Uh, well, there's five pixels, but they begin with zero, so the last one will be four. Which is why I take the ceiling. Uh, that way, that way it will be uh, zero, one, two, three, four, or five. Uh, where five will be non-existent. Then I subtract one to move each of them to the left, and then I, if it's minus one, then I set it to zero. This method basically ensures that uh, all of them are equally, all the colors are equally represented. Okay, going on. This is this is now C is now the basically the index of the column that I'm taking the color from. So then all this does is it sets the final color of the pixel according to the shader to uh, ve vector four because it's a color so it has R, G, B, and A and alpha values. Uh, texture. Uh, okay, so 
uh, texture 2D, so it's the color of this palette sprite that we imported, this one, that we imported using texture set stage over here. Uh, so it once again uses this texture 2D function to find the color of a particular pixel of the palette sprite. And the location of this pixel is determined uh, by uh, well, the, the x value of this pixel is determined by this value c that we just calculated, which is basically the column, and then the y value is of course the palette index that we imported using our lovely shader set uniform f function. Uh, sorry, over here, and this palette int you change to zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Mm, so for this one it's zero, then one, two. Um, and then finally I multiply this position by the size, again, I don't know exactly why, but it, otherwise it doesn't work, it shaders be like that. And then just, just to be sure, I take the RGB values of this texture and make sure the alpha is full. And that's basically how the shader works. Uh, you can see here I said the, I said the palette's uh, sprite texture. Then I set the, the size to the texel width and texel height of this texture. Um, I set the color number to be equal to 5, so the shader knows that there's 5 different colors. And finally, uh, I set the palette index, and then I draw the surface. So it's really not that complicated. The complicated part is actually figuring out all of the different functions, like texture set stage and so on. Uh, that is, is a bit annoying. So that's why I made this, so that it's easier for you, and for me as well, to just use this palette uh, shader in any thing I make. Because it's just, it's just always a fun addition. Uh, so there you go, go into the description, download my palette shader, and enjoy. Of course, if you're using a different game engine, you can also use the same philosophy, uh, just that unfortunately the annoying part is going to be left up to you. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.